Now, I have international finance and economic analyst Mokhtar Mohammed joining me now to look at the latest of the nation's economic situation. Good morning to you, Mokhtar. Many thanks for joining me on Business Insights on Plus TV Africa. Thank you, Justin, for always having me. Thank you. All right, uh, let's start this way, Bokta. You have been following what's been going on, and recently, Oye Daily was in the news, uh, the interview that he uh, had with um, Bloomberg, and he talked about um, the federal government uh, uh, looking at getting the NATO between 650 750 at the end of the year. What do you really think? Well, I, I, I don't share his optimism, but I know that that should be the true value of the Naira. But how soon we get it at December, I, I, I'm not too sure about that. But I think um, we'd say the value of the night between 650 to 700, I totally agree with him. But getting it in December, especially with the parity between the official market and the, uh, and the government owned market, I mean, and the parallel market, it's um, something that is big. the gap is very wide to be able to achieve that in December. But again, like you say, in the economy, anything is possible if you press the right buttons. And the right button as it is now is to make sure we have liquidity in the system. And he has assured that liquidity is coming out also with a, a new way FX policy that have to do with technology. And also, they will also be uh, um, run, um, um, uh, will I say, arrest of um, black market operators. And we get a re the change uh, where we can stay. So if you do all that, I definitely think um, it depends on how liquidity comes in the market and how they are able to implement the other policies, especially the one that has to do with technology. So definitely it's possible. The Nara the 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 the, the, the real value of the Nara should be between six hundred and um, I mean between that six fifty to seven hundred. But achieving that in December is an whole bill tax. Okay, there's a whole lot that was said, but let me just um, analyze some of um, the issues that he mentioned. He said um, uh, the official market will be expanded, uh, and of course, all uh, legitimate transactions will be done, but they will ensure that the illicit black market do not get supply. I don't know how we are going to achieve that, but I just want you to react towards that. And besides, the Naira has lost around 40% of its value since the central bank devalued it in June through the unification of the foreign exchange market. While the policy was geared towards attracting more liquidity, things haven't gone on as planned. So what exactly is government telling us? Well, uh, Justin, to attract liquidity, there must be stability. And once there's no stability, there won't be liquidity. And when you're talking about liquidity, you're saying you want to attract foreign direct investors, you want to attract portfolio investors, you came up with soft policy to attract those liquidity. But once there's no stability and what you have is volatility, Nobody wants to come to a market of volatility. And remember, there's a fundamental issue, the two-way exchange system. When I mean the two-way exchange system, I should be able to do business and be able to repatriate my money. That has not happened to the airline company. That has not happened for foreign investors either that have been in the, especially in the equity market. They've not been able to repatriate their fund for a while now. So definitely that is not, uh, those are fundamental issues that cannot just be wiped away for you to, to record this liquidity immediately. And I think um, they are working on those um, policies and that's why they are saying that we need to be patient with them. And definitely ISTC light at the end of the tunnel. But again, dealing with the, the what you call a little black market, I, I, I wonder how it's going to do that. Uh, I mean, that is, that's going to call for a big, 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 big operation and how much that will have impact on the economy is yet to be seen. We will see this black market going on that if you have liquidity in the system then you see a lot of people who want to come to the official market to get liquidity but if you if the black market people are still the one that own liquidity that could be another trigger of a crisis that could see the naira go higher and higher again so they need to get their uh, their, their 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 strategy right especially mm. bringing up liquidity into the system when they do that Definitely, ordinarily, ordinarily, this, the black market will just naturally go under. So you don't need to you don't need to struggle with them because, like we say in economy, once demands the, the normal term demand and supply is met, then the, 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 when when demand is met, then you have um, um, price come down. When 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 supply is not met, demand is high, supply is not met, then you have a uh, price go up. So they just need to do what they have to do, and people will begin mm. to have confidence to patronize the official right. market and the black market. And you don't need to arrest anybody. Naturally, the black market will just go under. 
All right, I know you said you, you don't share the optimism of the federal government because as it is right now, the current reality is that the Naira traded at around um, 993 Naira to the US dollar in the NAFEM uh, about 24 hours ago. And in the past week, it has traded at almost 1,300 Naira in the parallel market. This gap uh, you know, is uh, about 40% between the official window and the parallel market. Just when are we going to get back to winning ways as it were? I think in the first quarter of next year, that's why I'm optimistic about that we might get to winning ways. Uh, we might begin to see um, a little bit of those liquidities being managed sometime in December to January, especially if we have Nigerians in the diaspora coming home. Most of them will be sending FX home. And, and if we have made the official window attractive, then you see those liquidity that find their way into other space will begin to find their way into the official window. So that is where I think um, we will begin to see the stability. But I, I, for me, for complete stability mm. for a very long time, we, we should be looking between January, February and March next year. Speaking about inflows, during the Nigerian Economic Summit last week, the finance minister, Wale Edun, said the federal government is expecting around... Uh, $10 billion in forex inflows in a few weeks. And the president will also tie into executive orders aimed at reversing the flow of FX from the official window to the parallel market. What do you actually make out of all of that? Um, so Warren Buffett has said, if you're inside a hole, you don't, you, you don't keep digging the hole, you try to come out of the hole. And I think um, another person said that if you keep doing things the same and you think you have a different result, you are, you are more you are insane. Mm. So definitely, I think the Nigerian government is beginning to look to how to do things differently. Uh, we're already in a hole, so what we need to do is how are we going to come out of the hole? We don't have to dig ourselves into more hole. But in this case now, the $10 billion that we are expecting, we, we need to know where it's coming from. Is it loan? Is it forward loans again? So um, Bali Dung is not clear about that yet. Okay. I think by the time those ten billion dollars come in, remember we already have a forward a forward um, 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 issue a forward payment of about six point five yes, billion. Backlogs. So we are able to clear that backlog of six point five billion. Then we have about we will still have about three three. I mean we have about um, three point five billion. Then again we have NMPC and Nelson Bank of three billion. So we have another six billion. And so we have six <laughs> billion lot. to be able to protect a whole lot. And don't not to forget that again, this the 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 the, 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 the central bank said that uh, our production of increasing NPC have promised that they will have more effects into the central bank. So when you look at all those things that is saying, I mean, based on based what we have, what we what all expectation, I'm not saying what we have expectation, mm -hmm. then it's high to say by December. Maybe by December we see the closing of the gap, but I'm more optimistic by the first quarter of next year we oh, yeah. have stability in the exchange rate. All right, Mokta, we'll keep our fingers crossed as regards all of that and see if the federal government will actually do its bidding and see if we'll get that by December or the first quarter of next year, as you have said. But let's leave uh, Forex now for a moment and talk about the 2023 supplementary budget of 2.1 trillion naira. Do you in any way have reservations as to why we always have to supplement more so uh, the item that they've been budgeted for? What are your thoughts, really? Justin, I'm not surprised. Yeah, you, uh, if you're a student of history in Nigeria, that you need to know that every new administration that comes in in the final year of the outgoing administration always comes to the National Assembly for supplementary budget. That for me is not new. In short, the only new thing is that the president is doing it a little bit late. I expect by now they should be submitting the 2024 budget, not asking for supplementary budget in November. And uh, the speed in which the National Assembly passed the budget, even, I mean, second reading, I've been by the end of today, I'm sure that budget will be passed into law and the president will sign it, sign it into law. So this kind of speed should be extended to other areas of Nigerian economy. And let's see that. If we begin to see speedy uh, nature and things like that, then we'll, we'll begin to see our economy begin to take another new turn. Now, secondly, am I excited? What is in the supplement? No, not at all, not at all. All what you have in the supplementary budgetary current expenditure, 2.1 trillion recurrent expenditure. There's nothing in that budget that's been for capital uh, project, nothing, nothing. No one is going for that project that will create employment. What we see there, we see 2.1, almost um, 
two point uh, something billion, two point five billion for the for for cars, for the press, uh, for the office of the first lady. Uh, we also see uh, the, 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 a lot of um, worker salary. And you ask yourself how many Nigerians will benefit from that? And you see the presidency the renovation of the presidential uh, pillar, the renovation of the pillar. so it's all 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 about pleasure as far as I'm concerned. All about recurrent expenditure, recurrent expenditure. There's no one that is going into the productive sector of the Nigerian economy. So for me, I'm not ex excited about that. But mm. I wasn't. I was expecting a supplementary budget. But I thought the supplementary mm. budget will have to do with correct. We have to do with capital expenditure, not correct expenditure. Okay. Finally, as we wrap all of this um, up now, Mokhtar, what are your thoughts concerning the proposed amendment of the CBN Act? I'm sure you followed that story. And just it's not supposed to be a thought. It's not supposed to even come up to become in news. I thought that is already there, and that's why we have the independence of the CBN. Remember, the CBN Act was implemented by President Olusha Obasanjo just because he wants the CBN to be independent of the presidency. Mm. And so, um, the only place that the CBN is not is dependent on the president is when it comes to currencies, currency uh, printing. I mean, I mean, redomination of currency or printing of currency. That's when you need the approval of the presidency. But in other areas, I don't think we need because he wanted to make the, the CBN governor to be apolitical, not a, belong to a political party. But you and I know why we are coming to this is because the former CBN governor at a point wanted to become the president of Nigerian TV, still the CBN governor. That's why we are coming to this point. There have never been any CBN governor that have aspired for a political office when they were in CBN. This, the, the, form, the former governor was the first that did it. So when the National Assembly said we are going back, we are making sure that I just feel that um, they should take their time to do better things for Nigeria and not waste our, our precious time trying to amend an act that right there is all written clearly that you as a CBN governor, you are not supposed to be political. Well, thank you so much for all of um, your thoughts on um, the show today. We do appreciate it. Thank you, Justin, for having me. Well, welcome. Mokhtar Mohammed is an international finance and economic analyst. As we go on the show, empowering Nigerians for the demand of workplace and self-reliance will reduce the unemployment rate, especially among the youth. This was the position of a group at its one day work skills employability and entrepreneurship program. I'll leave you with details of that report. I am Justin Akadone. Many thanks for being there.